ones. So this time uh, our Kergo lab is about seedlings, seedlings and general care. And I've gathered quite a lot of young orchids and these are the smallest one which are I would say seedling size so they are not yet young orchids which I can actually keep outside of the more controlled area I'm not yet uh, ready to actually acclimatize them for my my bookshelf and thus I'm um, I'm only going to show you these ones as they are. Uh, I'm I'm considering them as small, uh, smaller seedling orchids. So I'll start talking about you about them one by one. What I have learned with them, and a little bit about what I have here. And yeah, um, I'll sit down and take one of these trays trays off. And then we are continuing. Hold on a sec. So all of these I have purchased last year. These two are um, I bought from uh, Schwerte. This is a uh, Lelia Gouldiana. Haven't checked yet. I'll try to check it for you if it's still a, a class as Lelia. But I have here actually two, two seedlings. I have three. But the other one actually rotted off and that was mainly due to um, it being too close to the uh, fogger. I'm going to insert later on the uh, video about the Balladarum where these are uh, residing underneath so you can actually see where I keep this. I, I consider that um, this kind of like seedling trays and um, small boxes they tend to get too much moisture so for the seedlings as the orchids comes especially cattleyas I wouldn't use this sort of seed trays um, per se uh, on the windowsill or on heating mat or anything like that I like to have a little bit more air around them to actually have the possibility to um, manipulate the, the temperatures and the humidity and all these uh, features which are actually really important for them to actually grow and especially because I I don't want to uh, water too much my cattleya seedlings I prefer them to be evenly moist and at time to time when it gets really dry or close to dryness I'm going to uh, flush them with water. It can be fertilized water, it can be something else. I, I tend to let the water come all the way up so that I can actually see that it's flushing and then going down. So that way I'm really like... Um, I don't do triples or anything like that. When they get water, they just... Psh, I'm putting it there and, and they get like fluoch and that's it. And then I let them a little bit sit, like a few minutes, and after that I'll put them back into the balladarium. And if I don't want to water them yet, and I consider they could do a little bit more moisture, then I usually tend to put on something like 5 to 10 minutes the fogger. Uh, and that seems to do the trick. Be careful if you have a fogger. Don't let it go close to the cattleyas or uh, uh, aim at cattleyas. So these uh, trichocentrum, which are part of Oncidium Alliance, they can tolerate that because they are basically like uh, some sort of strings. So they don't have uh, nooks and crevices to harbor any any moisture. So that is why I'm, I'm really uh, careful where I'm pointing it. And you can actually see how it's um, later on you are actually going to see how it works so don't worry um, I'm going to give you a video later but yeah so this is the Guldianas and as you can see it's still uh, tiny and I don't think the pseudobulbs are going to be that much bigger 
I would say that it, when I see them growing a little bit taller than this, something like um, up up here, this uh, suitable, then I might actually take them off from the Bellodarium. So hold on a sec, I'll bring you something to show you so you have some sort of measurement so you can actually uh, see how I'm uh, deciding these things. So just a sec. Okay, I just recorded quite a long talk and I'm not sure if you, if I actually got those. <laughs> so let me start again. Let's see, I'll do some, some work with it later. So. Uh, so the reason why I ha haven't been taking these Gulliana and Tenebrosa out of the Bellarium is that they aren't yet this size. This may be starting to be the similar kind of size, but I'm, I would like to keep it in, inside of the Bellarium at least this summer, maybe winter, maybe next summer take it off so that it can have the best... Uh, best elements to actually grow its newest pseudobulbs and get new roots because this didn't have that good root system before. And these I brought in because you could actually see what size small uh, orchids I usually have on my bookshelf. I do have the humidifier here as well, but it's like... Um, it's not the similar kind of uh, humidity as in the Belladarium. I think it's between 65 to 85% humidity there. Depends on if it's night or daytime. And um, yeah, this seems to be a little bit shriveled. I think it was because I, I was keeping it quite um, dry at some point might be that it would be good to actually give it more water i just water it uh, not that long time ago so this is lelia tenebrosa which i bought from ralke hold on a second you are you don't see that well yeah so so as you can see the difference between the pseudobulbs so definitely this aurea is staying in the pallodarium so this is the way I'm deciding. So these are uh, big enough to handle the outside air, but these ones I like to keep them inside of the Bellodarium because I can I can um, manipulate the uh, temperatures. I can manipulate the the yeah, air humidity. Uh, I'm going to show you the video about the foggers and stuff, so you are going to actually see that later on, where they are, how they are uh, located, because the Cattleyas don't like to have the fogger too close to them. Uh, for some other reason, if, if they are in that middle section where the fogger is on, it's they just seem to be getting too wet. So these um, uh, Trichocentrum sepaletos, can take the humidity, no problem, but the Cattleyas, I I push them a little bit aside so they won't get too much of the moisture. And the reason why I have the humidifier, oh, it's actually fogger, so it's making a fog in there, a reptile fogger, so is that, that I don't want to water these too often. I prefer letting them dry a little bit from the roots but I don't want the humidity of the air inside of the paludarium get too low. So when they are closing in to the dryness side, I, I can buy myself a little bit more time before I'm going to water them again with the fogger. So it's, that's the reason why I'm having them inside there. So yeah. And so these are, Trichocentrum sepaletas. I actually kept the smaller one. There is actually one small there. The bigger ones, they are growing these leaves. So these are leaves and there is actually a small pseudobulb down there. If I can actually show it to you. Okay, you might actually see something. 
so it's that little bulge, bulging thing in there so this has grown these new leaves here i'm waiting it to actually grow new roots at some point these are not that good root growers uh, these pots are way too big i would say um and yeah so uh there is the suitable th down there i'm not sure if you can actually see anything but it should be there and these leaves of the sepaletas this is the biggest one it's really huge um this phagnum is alive so it's creeping close to the plant so this is again this is growing new pseudobulbs there and it starts with the leaves sorry about that if this would actually concentrate now it concentrates on this one so there's the new leaves this is the old new leaf this is the oldest one which it came with and as you can see there is the pseudobulb they don't have that massive fruit system and yeah so all of them look similar kind of there's this sphagnum with them this has gotten a bit too red as you can see it's it's um it's close to the uh edge where the sun is shining so it's getting a little bit like too much light uh, but it's also growing a lot of new leaves there so <laughs> i think it's loving it so these are my sepaletas i haven't noticed any thrips or anything like that on them it's more with the to do with these uh, tenebralias uh, which are there on on the in the same paludarium so it's it's like yeah i don't think because of the thickness and the hardness of these uh leaves that they don't they much prefer eating something else and rather than these ones because they don't they don't taste that good but yeah all these are growing quite nicely i think i still have like two four six 13 may something like 13 left i'm not sure how much i had but the the small tiny tiny small ones mostly have died so i let them die by themselves so if they can survive they'll survive if they don't they don't but these bigger ones they are quite massive already i think they could actually soon come out from the Paludarium might be during the summertime, so I can actually have uh, more room for others. I might leave the small ones in there, but these bigger ones, they could actually start start um, coming out. So with the sepaletas, I haven't had any issues. At some point, they were a bit too wet. I think it was one or two, maybe three months after um, I had... Uh, I had uh, uh, put at them first only into the bark, uh, uh, sphagnum moss, maybe some perlite in there. And now I have a big size pumice in there, some small grey bark and a little bit perlite, I guess. So it's even though they are in these big pots, they aren't that wet all the time. So it's like balanced. I had to change the media. But other than that, they haven't had any issues. I I really don't have any issues with the sepaletas. Uh, these trichocentrums are really easy going, I would say. These lelias have been really easy going. I haven't had any issues with them uh, other than the uh, thrips, but that's just... Uh, I took care of them and that's it. Uh, but yeah, I, I really... It's... I... I I assume it's because uh, the way I'm growing them. So 
my advice is that if you are having issues, uh, rotting issues and all this, just get yourself some old uh, aquarium or paludarium. I'm going to see how mine is 180 liters, the big bigger one, the paludarium. I'm going to uh, uh, change it into gallons so you can actually uh, know what sort of size I'm using at this point. Um, old paludarium, uh, old aquariums don't cost that much, and um, because they're, I'm not keeping that much water in there. There is two pumps, so they are squ quite small. So it's like twenty euros the pumps that I have per pump, which I'm using to cipher and uh, rotate the waters, which is keeping the atmosphere hum atmosphere humid. But yeah, it's like, it's easier to handle them that way. I've been growing uh, seedlings for gardens and I ha that's why I have these like trays. So these are seedling trays which have around about this height uh, box on them usually. And they tend to get too moist. So I would recommend not to use those un unless you have the ability to actually monitor and, and give them air all the time and and keep the condensation not to dropping into for example cattleyas uh, because they don't like the water drips on them so that's why i have these in the aquarium because that's that's just easier so i would recommend that sort of place to start with this but yeah let's see the next ones Okay, so these ones I have had loads of things going on because uh, they seem to be uh, thread man magnets. So, oof, yeah, don't know why these have actually climbed up like this, but it's growing new roots. So this is the Cattleya intermedia, uh, semi alba cerulea uh, variety. Uh, this one is the same. So this, um, yeah, as you can see, these seems to have some sort of like rot issues at the bottom. It's still firm, so it shouldn't have anything bad there. But you can actually see the thread damage on the leaves, underside of the leaves. They are really not sure if you can see that well, but yeah, I'll... you see that spotting, that's uh, the mid... that's the thrips, so I'm not sure how many of these can actually survive because I've been like spraying them all the time. Uh, after I've sprayed them, I've done that now, um, I think I've been doing this since January or something. So I covered them with a uh, shade cloth so that this uh, light, which they have, won't burn the leaves. So be mindful with the with the um, insecticidal soaps that they might actually have have this sort of like uh, effect that they burn the leaves afterwards. Uh, this one seems to be bouncing back. There is actually a new root down there, as you can if you can actually see something. Okay, so that's the biggest one. There's the second one and then the third one. So it's growing. This is again intermedia. Um, this is my biggest intermedia. It, it already had like um, one pseudobulb and it grew this one with me. So this has been really... No, this one it's, it's grew with me because these two, I remember this long leaf. So these two were together and that one. And all my seedlings are getting... My water uh, from the tap is around 70, 70, 70 ppm with TDS meter. I haven't checked the ES, EC if you're using that one. Just ask me down below. I'll go and measure it again. It depends on the... Depends on the time but we have communal water so i'm 
I don't have my own well. So in Finland, you might have in some areas, if you have your own well where you are getting your water, not the communal water, it might be actually heavy with the iron. But in the capital city area, we get our water from uh, lakes in the central Finland. So it's 70 ppm around, maybe less, maybe more, depends on the year, day, time, how much I've been using it. Uh, it's really soft. So if I put it into the pot, uh, the acidity, it's going to drop down quite fast because it's it's not buffered that much. So if I use cal Calmac or something, I can buffer it upwards. So I can that way uh, affect how, what sort of like um, pH they are getting and what sort of mineral uh, nutrition they are getting. But this is really like like it, if it it's it's with the aquariums I have had these issues all the time because of the there it's so soft it's really it's ridiculously soft it's like ah uh, it's like off the chart almost I know kidding something like between two one and two I think about four is is like okay and seven is something that you want to actually have some sort of like um chalk remover or chalk remover i think that's called like um we don't have that sort of thing we have very soft water it comes out of the pipe i think 7.0 7.7 it's because of uh, that keeps the pipes in good condition but i know that when it gets something like this uh, acidic it drops down and i get the ideal uh ph for for the nutrition to actually be sucked into the plants but yeah i'm using that sim similar water without any any uh any uh well i don't do anything to it and i use it for the carnivorous plants so yeah it's quite nice okay so let's move on to the next ones um so these are my rincantlianthe Pamela Finneo, crossed with saccharic wax. These, um, they are growing. They are not the fastest ones in the world. So it's like, they are small, they are really slow, but that's expected. And I have like two of them in that pot. This is only one. And um, I think that's an old leaf. They are a little bit too light in the color. I really don't like that color. But I think it's because of the... The Intermedia loves the light. The Decary loves the light. <sighs> this one, not so much. So, not sure what which one of these underneath here. I don't know if you know Pamela Vini and Zachary Wax does that but yeah these weren't but they grow good root system so slowly slowly but they are getting there i might actually try to change the position between the decary and these ones maybe it's lower light because my decaries are so dark so that might actually help it's like it's like this so if i see some sort of issues with the seedlings I might just like maneuver them, like putting something there and something there, just to see if I can find like better position for them to towards the light. Oh, and the fluorescence light, which I have. The other one is normal daylight, and um, there's two. And the other one is the red one, uh, which is I think it's like uh, promoting um, promoting uh, growth, and it's uh, it's designed for the aquariums but because it was already old bulbs um, I haven't changed them because they would become I think too hard because it's in the aquarium you have to have uh, the light actually penetrating the water so I assume that it might be too hard for the seedlings and the plants which are not underneath the water so that's why I, I 
haven't changed those lights and I might actually buy some if I buy some new lights I buy the lights for for the plants itself which are grow lights not aquarium lights in if I cannot like raise them higher now they are so close so that's why using the old ones just something to mm, take into consideration when taking care of this ah oh boy uh, there's two of them so this is Deckery so it's similar to Skinnery there isn't that much in information about this and boy these are slow I need to see that there is no box on them so there is new root coming there is new growth coming and these are slow and small I would have wanted to keep them in the uh, the, the container a little bit more longer uh, rather than taking them out from the flask but because it was like the they were like contaminated so the agar had been thrown all over the place so I had to actually take these off and these were really badly damaged with by the trips you can actually see that so these ones are there is actually new growth there if you can actually see that there no you can actually see so there's new growth I lost the uh, leaves on these two and this one is Oh, there's only one leaf left and there is actually growing a new one at the side yeah so I have four already of these and then I have the fifth one here I haven't lost a one hmm, that's good okay this could be at, at least lower so the roots are getting some hydration it had moved a bit okay sorry about that now you can actually see this one so this one is growing that new growth there these are three are the old ones um yeah i'm hopeful this might actually survive um i'm surprised that this has been this harsh so i mean like tough that they haven't like given up and, and st start a fit or something I just put like a little bit of um, sphagnum moss next to their roots so it can actually get some hydration so I was sure that I'm going to lose these uh, deckeries because they are so small and the thrips just love them and I had to use the the one which has the uh, food oil in them so it was really horrible uh, situation if I see more trips on them now I think I'm going to cover up the whole uh, paludarium with some uh, clean fill and put some uh, there is this uh, flying box which are eating actually thrips all the stages of thrips so if I see them in there any more um, later on now that they are sending them uh, the those bugs again uh, because it's a warmer now so i can actually have have something ordered every once in a while something which is taking care of this i think i need to actually reposition this or oh, we could actually do it together now while i'm here because it's like tilted funny way angle I just watered them yesterday or something so it's like it's really wet now inside the container so now you can actually see the root system so some are dead which is expected but some are still alive as you can see there they are good it's a branching root system so if you are getting taking off some of the roots just be sure the, to have as you can see the root system is quite tall already so that's why it's pushing itself up because it's already at the bottom 
why I didn't put this into a, a community pot? Uh, well, for first, it would have been difficult to actually spray them well when there was thrips. And I like to give them a little bit room to have um, aeration around them so that they can actually grow better. And I don't know, I might have put the decorations together. Now I did when I did report that, put it them. I put some of them together with each other's because they were so small so that the washer won't get or they won't stay that wet all the time. Taking it a little tiny bit up so it won't get too moist at the bottom. I'm really careful for not um, uh, putting them too low. So I rather have them higher than too low. So the bad thing that you can actually do with the with the seedlings is that they get too wet from the uh, from the bottom, so the rhizome area, which is really delicate with these. So that's why they are so high up and not that much low. I could actually put these on there. It doesn't matter, these have been always like together when they were <laughs> little chit, <laughs> little kids. They've been together all the time. So I can actually use the same media and throw it into here. Because this was a little bit too high, I would say. I think I flushed something out while I was watering them, so that's why it's it's like it shows like it has been too high. So now it's much better. A little bit difficult to get there. Sorry about. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think you could go down too. What else? I have kept this up, up like this. I don't think it's a good idea to have have like a other kind of support. This this is uh, adequate enough. Yeah, those seed and leaves. Be careful when you are push pull, pulling them out. I would recommend to. If you're not sure if it's uh, too thin from the bottom or the rhizome area, don't pull them, just go and cut them. So as you can see, this one has all as well good root system, looking nice. I think these can graduate soon into the open air. I'm just letting them to establish well before and um, anyway so these are already in that sort of mix where there is barely any uh, sphagnum moss that's because they have already that fake root system. So I don't want to, um, because they are in that moist environment, I don't want to suffocate the root system. So I want to have a really fast dry cycle for these ones with these big roots. If they would have been the um, seedling roots, I wouldn't have mind them being in similar kind of mix as I have these other ones. But as these are so well advanced, I would say that this is a good um, plant to start with as a seedling with my one year really advanced knowledge. <laughs> that was a joke. 
so that would be a good one to continue i think i need a little bit more of um of the media and i need to adjust this but yeah so these are the seedlings these are the cattleyas i have and these are my experience and i have um kept kept diaries of these so i have been recording um i think every time i've done something with this so i have recorded so you can actually go back i have this a playlist for the seedlings so you can actually go and uh, watch them from the beginning when i got them and all so i'm keeping these mainly in pumice and and there is a little bit indeed some of them might have a little bit uh, sphagnum moss in there but mainly it's pumice and a small grade bark seedling bark and they seems to be doing well uh, as you could see my uh, the root system looked quite nice and they are renewing them and growing bigger roots which is good sign i'm waiting for these to bounce back after the treatment but with the thrips uh, or the battle but what else um if they are doing good don't change anything if you I, it's difficult to say. I, I changed the media into more airy mi mix. I think that that was like they said, after two, three months or maybe month, uh, in the instructions, uh, from Rurke, where I bought this, that you should actually have them. In the at the beginning, you you should have them in in sphagnum, uh, but later on, change them into more, uh, different kind of mix. And that's what I have been doing. And I prefer having really well training mix, especially with the Cattleya seedlings. It depends on these. So these didn't have that good root system. That's why there is some Asphagnomos. It's more of um, to give them some moist moisture and, and uh, wick the moisture a bit rather than to actually keep it wet. So that's the idea how I'm having now uh, the mix there inside. So I have a small grade pumice, small grade bark, a little bit of uh, sphagnomus, and, and it depends on the plant what's um, how much. But yeah, this is my experience with the seedlings. I hope you are able to actually grab one or th two things from there. And... Thank you for watching and I'm waiting for the others uh, might pick some uh, tricks and uh, up to my sleeve for the next one. So as promised, um, this is the paludarium or the aquarium where my seedlings are. It's old one as you can see from the scratches on this um, the, uh, Uh, glass and I'll try to pan you over really slow so I ha have other plants in here mainly some things which are not doing good uh, outside of the paludarium so these are the cats which are in these um, pots and you just saw them and I'm going to uh, pause a while and show you the other ones. So here are the other ones. There's the Lelia Gouldiana and the Nebrosa Aurea form. And those are the Trichocentrums. They are really dry as you can see from the moss. Uh, I'm actually going to water them soon. And as you can see from behind the light is coming straight towards these. Uh, and I just put on the fogger. You might actually hear that noise. It's really horrible. But as I told you, I'm not going to keep it on that f uh, uh, that long when I'm doing this. And yeah, that's about it. And as you can see, the fog is uh, going down. In between the cattleya so the other ones are there on this side oh sorry and the other ones are behind the ones uh, on 
well, trichocentrums. So uh, the fog is not getting that heavy on them, and all these house plants are seems to be liking that uh, fog, so they are getting the bounding of it. But that's all. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'm really looking forward to from to learn from the others. And sorry about the length. I did try to make it short as possible. Take care and bye.